everybody. I'm Gloria Copeland. Welcome to the Believer's Voice of Victory. We're hearing about the future today from the book of Revelation. Hallelujah. Billy Brim, Prayer Mountain in the Ozarks is with us. Professor Brim will be sharing about what is to come from the Bible. Yeah, well, actually, we will get to the book of Revelation because we're going to study the book of Daniel as it applies to the whole book of Revelation, really. Mm -hmm. The whole seven years is introduced to us in the book of Daniel. And we're going to be studying the book of Daniel. And um, the first uh, six chapters of Daniel are history of events that happened, uh, an account chronological of what happened in his life. But now we're, we're not yet to chapter one because we're, we're talking about what got Daniel there in the Babylonian yeah. captivity, what got Israel there. So we, we talked about there's three groups of peoples, the Jews, the nations, and the church. First group introduced to us are the nations. God began mm -hmm. with 70 nations after they got off the boat. Um, Shem, Ham, and Yafet, Noah off Noah's boat. And then the nations rebelled under Nimrod. And the Babylonian system is born. Mm. Now, all the nations have rebelled against God. There is a unit. They have rebelled. But God had a plan. He always has a plan. Yes, that's right. And His He's plan, the He just one. didn't say, Oh my goodness, Holy Spirit, I wish you'd look there. They've rebelled. He knew they would rebel. He didn't want them to rebel, but He doesn't make pokey, uh, they had Pinocchios. A he doesn't make robots. Mm. He makes men with a will to serve Him. And we're going on into eternity future, and we need to have we need to be people of will who made choices for God. Oh, thank and you, so Jesus. they all rebelled. But God has, if they will take it, He has a salvation for them. And so uh, what He did was uh, this: not willing that the nations would perish, He separated a nation unto Himself, a holy nation, and He gave that holy nation a holy call, Praise a God. holy job. So Genesis chapter 12 and verse 1, you're familiar with it. Now Jehovah said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto the land that I will show thee, and I will make of thee a mm. great nation. Amen. And I will bless thee and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and I will curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. All the nations of the earth, their blessings lie in that nation of Israel. Now, wow. God called a man who would live by faith to be the patriarch of that great nation, separated wholly unto God. He rewarded Abraham and his natural seed by promising them a land. He promised a blessing upon them. He promised that he personally would bless people that bless them. He personally would curse people that curse them. And... Uh, all the nations of the earth are blessed in Israel. Uh, just think of it. We have the Bible through them. The primary blessing is, of course, the Messiah, our Lord and Savior. Oh, <laughs> but also in the millennium and in the ages to follow, earth and the sheep nations, their blessings are tied up in the blessings of Israel. Now, when God called this nation, He, he calls them the chosen people. Well, what are they chosen to do? Everybody knows they're the chosen people. Well, the chosen people are chosen for a job, and their job is to reveal God. Their job is to reveal God to all the nations. And so in Romans 9, 10, and 11, which all three chapters go together, Romans 9, 10, and 11, and they are the revelation of God to the church. They're one of the letters to the church on the mystery of Israel. And we're going to start with verse 25, Romans 11, 25. For I would not, brethren, have you ignorant of this mystery, lest you be wise in your own conceits. It's amazing to me that all the things where God said, I don't want you ignorant, people are so ignorant. He <laughs> said, I don't want you ignorant of the spiritual gifts. They're that's so right. ignorant that's of the true. spiritual gifts. I never had thought of that. And uh, he, right. I, I guess that's his way of pointing it out. I don't want you ignorant of my plan for Israel. He said his will, whether yes. it's followed or not. I would not, brethren, have you ignorant of this mystery. He's talking in these three chapters about Israel. Lest you be wise in your own conceits. That's what happens with replacement theology. They, they're, they're conceited. They think that God only has got the church and that's it. No, he calls Israel my people. That a hardening in part hath befallen Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. Now, this is not talking about the times of the Gentiles rule in Jerusalem. This is talking about 
the, the last little goy, last little Gentile gets into the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. And so all Israel shall be saved, even as it is written, there shall come out of Zion the deliverer. He shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. And this is my covenant with them when I shall take away their sins. As touching the gospel, they are enemies for your sake, but as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sake, for the gifts and the calling of God yes, that's right. are not repented of. He mm -hmm. called them. He chose them. He didn't change his mind. He will not change He doesn't his change his mind. Now, their job is to reveal God to those nations that rebelled. So what does he do with Israel? He plants them. He brings, he brings Abraham actually over from Iraq himself in Babylon. And he brings him over Ur of the Chaldees. And he brings them over and he puts them in the place. We're going to show you an ancient map. Of, and in, in this map that they're showing you now, Jerusalem is right in the middle of it. You th see three leaves. Uh, the top leaf to the left is Europe. The top leaf to the right is Asia. The, the southern leaf, the bottom leaf is Africa. And you see there Jerusalem right in the middle. And he placed them there. He said in Deuteronomy 32 that he placed them in the center of the earth for governmental purposes. And so he puts them there. And this nation whose job is to reveal God, he sets them right on that little land bridge between the three continents. Isn't that amazing? That means that, and it's the easiest way to go, the Via Maris, the way of the sea. So when the, when the caravans, trade caravans travel, when the armies travel, they go down through this little place by the sea, Israel. And there, they're supposed to see a people mm -hmm. revealing yeah. God. Now, plan A is to reveal himself through a nation by putting his blessings on that nation. So if you'll turn to Deuteronomy chapter 28, you're going to see how he did that. This is plan A. Deuteronomy 28. Moses, you know, wrote these first five books of the Bible. And Moses writes, of course, under the inspiration of the Lord, Deuteronomy 28, 1. And it shall come to pass, if you shall hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord your God, to observe to do all his commandments, which I command you this day, the Lord your God will set you on high above all nations of the earth, and all these blessings shall come on you. Hallelujah and overtake you if you hearken unto the voice of the Lord your God. Blessed shall you be in the city. Blessed shall you be in the mm -hmm. field. Blessed shall be the fruit of your body. That's their children. And the fruit of your ground, your crops, the fruit of your cattle, the increase of your kind, your herds, the flocks of your sheep. Every one of these blessings is something you can see. Right. Every one of these listed right here, you can see it with your eyes because the nations, they don't move spiritually. They're coming down there in their trade caravans. They're coming yeah. down with their armies, and they only can see. Hey, look at these people. Look at that crop. They, they have got thousands and thousands of sheep and cattle. And, and look That's at their right. children. They're all healthy. And look at them. They're wealthy. Every single one of these things is mm. something you can see. Bless the Lord. And uh, let's go down to uh, verse 10. And all people of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of yod heh Jehovah, and they shall be afraid of you. And the Lord shall make you plenteous in goods, in the fruit of your body, in the fruit of your cattle, in the fruit of your ground, in the land which the Lord swear unto you, Hallelujah. and unto your fathers to give you. And the Lord shall open unto you his good treasure, and the heavens shall give rain unto thy land in your season. And, and look up here. You shall be the head and not the tail. You shall be above and, yes, and you right. shall not be beneath. Uh, you know, God's sacred year begins with Rosh Hashanah. And it ends with the Rosh Hashanah of the next year. And uh, when we had Rosh Hashanah in September, I thought about one time when I was uh, in Israel on Rosh Hashanah. And we were at a long table. And the man who was, you know, presiding at the table, the dinner for Rosh Hashanah, they brought in front of him a big fish head, something like that on a plate. It was a big fish. It had a big head, and its eyes were looking up, you know, like this. And it was steamed. 
And so he went through these blessings. And he took a little piece of that fish from the bottom that was steamed and ate it. And he said, we shall be the head and not the tail. And pass it all around the table. Is that right? So if you're a little kid and you're at Rosh Hashanah every year, and you're hearing that you're to be the head and not the tail, you believe you should be the head and not the tail. And so this was in the blessings of God. All of these were something that those nations could see. Now, I want to reveal myself through blessings upon you. Everything they can see. Praise God. But if you don't listen to me, I'm still not taking away your call. You're still going to have the call of revealing me to the nations, but it's going to come another way. These mm. curses are going to come upon you. And then look at verse My 64. Uh, the Lord shall scatter you among all people from one end of the earth to the other. So if you don't obey me, then I'm going to scatter you out of that land. That land is so holy, the Bible says it spits them out. A lot more was required of them than were required of all the what other nations. What verse was that? Verse 64. 64. Uh-huh. 2864. Yeah, 64. He will cause them to be scattered throughout all the earth. And didn't that happen? And it happened. And Moses knew it was going to happen. So turn to, Mo well, Moses didn't know, but God knew. Yeah. So God yeah. spoke down through Moses and a look at chapter at Deuteronomy, go over a couple of chapters. And Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 1. It shall come to pass when all these things are come upon you, the blessing and the curse which I've set before you. And you shall call them to mind among all the nations where Jehovah thy God hath driven thee. I'm reading from the American Standard. Deuteronomy 30, verse 2. But you shall return unto Jehovah your God and shall obey his voice according to all that I command you this day, thou and thy children with all thy heart and with all thy soul. And then Jehovah thy God will turn your captivity and have compassion upon you and will return and gather you mm -hmm. from all the peoples where Jehovah your God has scattered you. And if any of your outcasts be in the uttermost parts of heaven, from there will Jehovah your God gather thee. And from thence will he fetch you. And Jehovah your God will bring you into the land which your fathers possessed, and you shall possess it. And he will do thee good and multiply thee above thy fathers. Um, the Lord will circumcise your heart. Verse 7, Jehovah will put all these curses upon your enemies and upon them that hate you and persecuted you. Uh, all while they were out in the diaspora, the nations that treated them wrong, they're going to get curses. But you shall return and obey the voice of Jehovah and do his commandments, which I command you this day. And Jehovah your God will make thee plenteous in all the work of your hand, mm -hmm. in the fruit of your Thank body, you, the fruit of your cattle, and the fruit of your ground for good. For Jehovah yes. will again rejoice over thee for good as he rejoiced over your fathers." So he prophesies, that's prophecy. We learn from the prophets what's going to happen. They did get scattered all to the four corners of the world, but they're going to be gathered. And so we have what's called the scattering yeah. and the ingathering. And then when God gathers them back, they're going to be revealing God to the world because he kept his word. And he's doing that. And he's doing it right now. So that is a revelation of God. I put together a little book, just a little one you can carry around, um, called uh, God's Promises to Israel for the Land, and another one, a uh, little one, God's uh, Revealed Plan that the nations who mistreat them will be judged for doing that. So I'm going to do another little book. I'm going to call it The Scattering and the Ingathering and just use those scriptures. That's good. Because that is what... That's a sign. It's a sign to us right now. I'm glad we don't live when they were being scattered. I'm glad we live when they're going to be, yes, when they amen. are being gathered. Because the blessing is in the there. The blessing is in that. Jesus is coming yep. soon. Now, when Jesus, uh, in Luke chapter 21, he's giving them the time uh, that he's going to destroy, that not he's going to destroy, but the second temple would be destroyed by the Titus and the Romans. And he told them that that would happen. In Luke 21, 20, you shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies. And um, then he says in verse 21, 24, they, the Jewish people, living at the time of when the Romans came in, 
shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. So they lived in the land. They knew blessings. Um, they lived until um, uh, the times of David and Solomon were great blessings. Joshua took them into the land. I mean, it's like reading, reading a superhero book. Mm -hmm. And then David came and they built the temple. Uh, but then afterwards... Uh, David's sons fought, idolatry was introduced, and they were scattered. And uh, Israel in the plan of God, David Barron writes, the Babylonian captivity with which commences or begins the times of the Gentiles will only close with the end of this age when the kingdom shall one again, once again be restored to Israel. So they're coming back and we're living in the time when the greatest miracle Hallelujah. is taking place. Now, the temple was destroyed. The first temple was built by David. I'm built by, it was, God showed David the plan for it. Solomon built it. And uh, they had this great, wonderful temple. It, it should have been one of the wonders of the world. And miracles happened there every day. They would offer up on the altar the sacrifices. And no matter how the wind blew, the smoke would go straight up to God. All kinds of miracles were That's taking cool. place there. That's awesome. But um, then they send Satan. Now, what, what, what made this temple different? You can read about it in 2 Chronicles 5. The glory of the Lord. We call it the Shekinah, the Shekinah. It was like a, like a cloud, a bright cloud. And it was over the ark. And it was in that temple. And that was God come to live in their midst. Praise. But when they sinned, God took away the glory. He took that out. And in Ezekiel chapter, mm. in the book of Ezekiel, I, um, I was so amazed when I found this out. You know, when Ezekiel saw that wheel within a wheel, mm -hmm. and he saw that amber and all those, um, actually it was a chariot of God, and it had come for the purpose of doing something to escort, escort that glory out of the temple. Hmm. So let's read about it. I've got the, I've got the scriptures right. here. Ezekiel 1, 4. I looked and behold a whirlwind came out of the north, a great cloud and a fire enfolding itself and a brightness was about it. And out of the midst was the color of amber out of the midst of the fire. And out of the midst thereof came the likeness of four creatures. And this was their appearance and they had the likeness of a man. Now verse 15. I beheld the living creatures, and behold, one wheel upon the earth by the living creatures with his four faces. The appearance of the wheels in their work was like unto the color of a burl, and they had one likeness in their appearance, and their work was as if it were a wheel in the middle of a wheel. Actually, it's a chariot hmm. uh, of God, but to him it was a wheel in the middle of a wheel. You probably heard the old spiritual, Ezekiel saw a wheel way up in the middle of the air. And uh, this, this, this chariot this, uh, and, and the beings that escorted it, uh, Ezekiel 1.20, Whithersoever the spirit was to go, they went. And thither was their spirit to go, and the wheels were lifted up over against them, for the spirit of the living creatures, creature was in the wheels. When those went, these went. And when those stood, these stood. Mm -hmm. And when those were lifted up from the earth, the wheels were lifted up over them, for the spirit of the living uh, beings was in the wheels. Verse 26, and above the firmament that was over their heads was the likeness of a throne and the appearance of a sapphire stone. And upon the likeness of the throne was the likeness and the appearance of a man above it. And I saw as the color of amber, as the appearance of fire round about within it, from the appearance of his loins upward, fire, Jesus. and from the appearance of his loins downward, fire. fire. And it had brightness round about it. Mm. Hallelujah. So this being, these living creatures, and this, this, this one who sits upon the throne who is there with them, and the departure, they have come for the Shekinah. They're going to take it back to heaven, that cloud. Praise God. Ezekiel 9, 3, And the glory of Israel was gone up from the cherub, mm -hmm. whereupon he was to the threshold of the house. And he called to the man clothed in linen, which had the writer's inkhorn by his side, the Talmud says that there were 10 stages of the removal of the glory. 
and we can read about them in Ezekiel chapter 10 in verse wow. 4. Ezekiel 10, 4, Then the glory of the Lord went up from the cherub and stood over the threshold of the house. It was behind the Holy of Holies. Then it goes up and it goes to the threshold. And the house was filled with the cloud and then to the court. And the court was full of the brightness of the glory of the Lord. Verse 18, The glory of the Lord departed off the threshold and stood above the cherubims. And um, it went out the east gate, the end of verse 19, it went out from the, from the temple courtyard, Ezekiel eleven twenty three, 23, and the glory of the Lord went up from the midst of the city and stood upon the mountains, which is on the east side of the city. So the glory of the Lord goes over to the Mount of Olives and from the Mount of Olives, then it goes up into heaven. The second temple never had the glory of the Lord like that, the Shekinah. It had Jesus when he came there, but the Shekinah glory left. And it's very interesting to understand it because... Um, it says in the Bible and in, the, um, in what they know about it, the Jews know about it, uh, Josiah, good King Josiah and Jeremiah hid the ark. And so people are always saying to me, do the Jews know where the ark is? Yes, they know. And it was, it's hidden in a secret chamber. Mm. And the ark of the covenant with the manna and with the, uh, with the commandments is there hidden somewhere under the temple mount. But the glory went up from the Mount of Olives. And we know that our Savior went up from the Mount of Olives. Glory to and we know that He's going to come back to the Mount of Olives. Hallelujah. And the glory will be once again among men. That's so awesome. there, as you see, Gloria, the temple got destroyed by the Nebuchadnezzar. It couldn't have been destroyed if the glory had been in it. No, that's right. It's just a building without it. Ooh, that's so awesome, Billy. Billy and I'll be right back. Therefore, do not worry and be anxious. The whole Bible preaches against worry because it produces stress, strain, and death. It is one of those things that the Word of God directly commands us not to do. So what are you supposed to do then with all those concerns you have about your problems? In 1 Peter 5, 7, the Lord said you should cast them all upon Him, all of them. You have to replace all those worries with the Word. You can't do it. The greater one lives within you. You will never have to worry again. The mystery of God is declared to His servants, the prophets. Bible prophecy is being fulfilled all around us. The world is guessing how it's all going to turn out, but God knows what the future holds. Discover God's unfolding plan for you and your family in the End Times Package, your spiritual preparation kit. Live in hope and without fear as you study the book of Daniel with Billy Brim's complete syllabus. Chapter by chapter, you'll learn what the prophets revealed about the days we live in. It's never been more important to be led by the Holy Spirit. Kenneth Hagin's book, How You Can Be Led by the Spirit of God, is an excellent resource to help you tune in to God's voice. Recognize the importance of God's calendar with David Barron's book, Types, Psalms, and Prophecies. Be expectant. Get ready and live in the hope of Jesus' soon return. Be sure about your future. Order the End Times package today at a special savings for only $36.99. You'll receive the books and syllabus from authors David Barron, Billy Brim, and Kenneth E. Hagan. These End Time resources will bring clarity to help you recognize God's mercy and goodness given throughout all time. Order on kcm.org slash TV special or call 800-600-7395 for an additional 10% off order online. We believe Jesus is coming soon. Yes, we do. But if it's not today or tomorrow or very soon, we'll be going soon. Mm -hmm, we will. And you'll be going soon. And you want to go to the right place when that time comes. And the way you do that is to receive Jesus as the Lord of your life. Be born over again. That means all your sins are gone forever. Praise His name. The books are clean. Thank Isn't that God. awesome? Oh, hallelujah. People can live. You know, I've known people that were serial killers. You have. You've been to prison, haven't you? I haven't? have and visited with them. And, mm -hmm. and uh, they, multiple murders. But now they're born again. 
and they're sweet, kind mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. Well, they're going to go up. They're not going to go down. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter what you've done. If you'll, be, if you'll receive Jesus as the Lord of your life, your sins will be washed away and gone forever. So just pray this right now with your whole heart. Say, Jesus. Jesus. I receive you. I receive you. As my Lord and Savior. As my Lord and Savior. Take my life. Take my life. And do something with it, Lord. Do something with it, Lord. I give it to you. I give it to you. Glory to God. I receive. I receive. I'm born again. I'm born again. Say, fill me with your spirit, Jesus. Fill me with your spirit, the Jesus. Holy Spirit, come into me. Holy Spirit, come into me. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. If you prayed that prayer with your heart, you're born again. Heaven will be your home. You Amen. could go today and you'd go straight to heaven. Mm -hmm. Or if it's a 10 years from now, which I don't think it will be, but if it is, you'll be ready and you stay ready. You get in a good church. You get in the Bible. You keep watching the broadcast and grow. We have a salvation package we want to send you. Uh, a book that's called He Did It All For You. Two brochures on how to read your Bible, how to study your Bible. This will help you get started in your new life. Find you a church that preaches the Word of God and preaches faith to you and what the Bible says. And get in it and grow. Hallelujah. This book we want to send you will help you grow and understand what belongs to you. Billy and I will see you again tomorrow. And you request now your free salvation package on kcm.org or you call or however you want to contact us. And we'll send you some good things absolutely free that you can grow on. And then you get busy and find you a church. Get in it. One that preaches the Word of God to you. Billy and I rejoice with you. We're so excited about those of you that have come to the Lord today. That makes it all worthwhile. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So share your testimony. Get into good church. Be sure and let us know what happened to you. We'll see you again tomorrow. And remember this, Jesus is, is Lord. Lord. Request your free salvation package today at kcm.org. Jesus did it all for you. It's time to receive his love and live the abundant life God provided for you. Come to a Kenneth Copeland Ministries event. The 2014 Branson Victory Campaign, February 27th to March 1st with Kenneth and Gloria Copeland at Faith Life Church in Branson, Missouri. The 2014 Southwest Believers Convention, June 30th through July 5th with Kenneth and Gloria Copeland and their special guests in Fort Worth, Texas. The 2014 Washington, D.C. Victory Campaign, November 13th through 15th with Kenneth and Gloria Copeland at the Hilton Memorial Chapel in Woodbridge, Virginia.